Hello, I'm Chris, and welcome to my DIY channel. First, I want to say thanks to all the first responders and all the people that put their lives on the lines during Hurricane Harvey. Also, thanks to all the volunteers and all the people that have opened their homes to the evacuees and people affected by Hurricane Harvey. Here's what you'll need. 12 inches of 2 inch PVC pipe, 12 inches of 3 quarter or 1 inch PVC pipe, 6 stainless or brass screws, a lamp holder of your choice, I would prefer E27, and spray paint of your choice. Some other materials that you might find useful or helpful in this project will be a DC 12 volt power supply if you decide to do 12 volt LED lights or if you decide E27 light bulbs you'll need an E27 light bulb of course spotlight and you'll also want some sort of plug and I know you're asking uh, yourself how did he plug all those in or wire them up in this case I used low voltage 12 volts, but you can also use a 110 volt or 115 volt AC power, and you can power these bulbs up, and they are low voltage 5 watts, so they'll put out a lot of power with just a little bit of voltage. Or you can also use these bulbs, these are DC 12 volts. I didn't like these bulbs, so I ended up changing them out, but they have uh, different ones that have spotlight in the front. I didn't like them too much because of the price actually, not because they weren't effective. And or you can get these which also fit in these sockets that I used on my project and these sockets look like this and the bulbs that go on them will just clip in right here like this. So let's get started. Start with a piece of 2 inch pipe, PVC about 12 inches long and you can also use 3 inch or even larger if you'd like. The concept is the same either way. So start by heating the end and you want to get it nice and hot but don't burn it and uh, you're going to use uh, another can you'll see here in a second. I'm going to stretch the end out over the top of the can. And that's going to give me a starting point. That starting point being a section that is big enough to fit over the other piece. So I'm basically making um, the end of a coupling. Uh, so I'll let it cool here for a second and then I'll reheat this pipe. And I'll slide it down over the piece that you see standing up behind it here. And this is safe don't get it hot melting hot where you're gonna have fumes and things because it's not healthy um, but go ahead and warm it up definitely use in a well ventilated area I have a fan blowing right behind me and it's blowing this right out of my shed and it's blowing straight across the table Now here you can see I'm going to push it right down over. It's going to look like it's deforming it a little bit and it actually is. But it's not going to be a problem and it's not going to show up in your end product. Because you're going to be cutting a section of this out. Now I'm just going to use a piece of 1 inch pipe to tap it off the end because it gets a little snug once it cools down. As you can see here, it's stretched about an inch and a half down the pipe, maybe two inches. And I'm going to make my piece, I have, I have a 12 inch piece of pipe, and I'm going to make one light out of that. And roughly uh, five inches down the pipe, I'm going to uh, make a mark. That'll be the overall length. And uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cut the end of the pipe off square. 
And I know a lot of people say, oh, well, you have power tools and so on and so forth. Well, I just want you to see here that it's really simple just to cut it with a hacksaw. And what I like to do is just put a score mark all the way around first, then begin to cut through. And what I was pointing out earlier was stay outside the line. Don't try to cut the line out because you will make the line crooked. And so here after I've got it a little bit scored, I can work a little bit harder on it. And then I like to put it in the vise just to take the last piece off. And you'll see here, I'm just gonna trim it all the way through. Just one last cut through the final piece in my vise. And that just makes it a little bit easier. Now I'm going to use a sanding block and just kind of take the uh, blade marks out just to make those kind of less noticeable. It'll make the final product a little nicer. And don't worry if it's not perfectly straight. I like to try to sand it off and make it as straight as possible. but. It's not going to be noticeable if it's not perfectly straight because one end is going to be pointing in the ground. Now, as you can see, I got my piece. It's about five inches long. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to notch this. This notch is going to be so that the other piece of pipe will have room to bend at 90 degrees or swivel. Again, I just used my hacksaw and I took a small chunk out and that's about the rough amount that I needed taken out. I've got a little block of wood here and it's the exact width of the pipe. And as you can see I kind of got some little shims glued on the edges. But it's the exact width of the outside of the smaller piece, not the stretched piece. What I'm going to do, I'm going to stick it down in there just so that it kind of forms a tight snug fit. And I'm going to use that to shape the sides of the pipe down around it. You're going to see what I'm going to do. I'm going to heat the sides. Again, be sure you have a nice ventilated area. And I'm not heating the back, just the two sides. And the sides are going to act as a flange. Now I'll just stick it in my vise and I'm just going to cramp it down a little bit to give it a more of a flat contour. That will allow, as you can see, the two to fit together more like flange. So now I'm just going to clean the edges up with my palm sander. Make sure everything lines up the way I want it to. And I'm going to drill some pilot holes. Just a 1 8 drill bit is all I needed. Try not to move it. I'm holding it together and drill the other side. Now, those holes will, hold the, will be the screw holes. I'm just going to get a couple screws like wood type screws and what I'm going to do I'm going to go up in size I want this hole on the outside to just be for the screw to go through but it's not going to actually bite into this now before I screw it together I'm going to countersink the outside of the hole just so the screw will be flush and then just screw it together Not too tight, you don't want to strip it out. That's why I use a screwdriver and do it by hand. Now again, this is the other piece about six inches long, five, five and a half, six inches long. And this is gonna be the actual piece that goes on the top and projects out the light, right? So I wanna make it a little fancy, I guess, is what you might call it. So I'm just gonna bevel it. And I thought, well, look, I can just use this piece of sandpaper and put a little curve on it. 
and uh, make it look nice. You can also just put this in a uh, chop saw and chop it on 45 degrees and it'll look nice too. I did one exactly like that also. You can also use just a miter box with a hacksaw and cut it on 45 degrees. Now just clean up all the edges with the sandpaper. About uh, 180 or 240 sandpaper uh, works the best. Now I'm using this little lid that I got off of a piece of a jug. And I'm going to use that. I'm going to screw this in to hold it. And then I'm going to put a hole and the bulb holder is going to bolt into that. Now, if I could do this again, I think what I would do is I would buy a E26 or E27 socket. I wanted to go with these small LEDs, but I just don't like the way the socket goes in there. So I'll put a link in the description to some E26 or E27 sockets bolt holders that would uh, work just as well. And you could just screw them in on the bottom the exact same way that I'm doing it here. I'm just using some little brass screws to hold this to this cap and there's a little gap so I'm leaving a little area for the water if it goes in there to get around and drain out not affect the bulb at all again I'm just going to countersink this screw that's going to hold that in the bottom I'm putting two kind of diagonally or 45 degrees from each other just to kind of hold it down in place. Just going to put a little pilot hole to get it started. Just going to line that up and put the next screw, put the screw in. And again, I'll put two in there. I'll drill through the same hole that I already made. And then that'll put a hole on the inside. That hole on the outside is just for lining it up. Now, as you can see, it's in there and it looks actually pretty nice. Now we can bolt this back together. And after you've done a few of these, you can actually make them pretty quickly. So if you wanted to make a dozen of these things, you could make them pretty fast. Make one, get yourself familiar with how to actually make it. And then after that, you could just cut a whole bunch of pieces out and just start screwing them together. I priced just the light bulbs for the halogen uh, to replace my landscape lighting and two bulbs I think was $11 and uh, they weren't even the good bulbs and I think you could probably make one of these for maybe I don't know three dollars maybe with the PVC and the screws and the little lamp socket and then again, the bulb would be the most expensive part, but I think now LED bulbs are substantially cheaper. So as you see, I just took a piece of three quarter inch pipe and I'm just gonna screw it into the bottom there. Again, just putting a couple holes for pilot holes and then a couple stainless steel screws. Now you can see I just cut a 45 degree so that would just drive in the ground real easily. And essentially it's it's pretty much done except for paint all the screws so you're looking at uh, what I say two four six six screws is all you need and a piece of PVC pipe 
three quarter inch and a piece of two inch and here's another one that I made I painted it flat black and I and then the one that you just saw me make and I painted that uh, shiny black or gloss black and uh, they're kind of dusty they've been sitting outside a little while but uh, I think it looks nice and for the price you can't beat it here's a daytime look and here's what it looks like at night thanks for staying to the end be sure to subscribe and hit the bell next to the subscribe button so you'll be notified every time I come out with a new great project also click the share button share this with all your friends on social media I'm also on Twitter Instagram Facebook Pinterest Google Plus and all other social media well that's all for now I'm Chris and I'll see you back here in two weeks for another amazing project that you won't want to miss